And so now it is my great privilege to introduce you to Frank Clegg. And for those of you who joined us for the first opening session of this symposium, uh, you will recognize Frank Clegg as the keynote speaker. He is the former president of Microsoft Canada, and he is currently the CEO and chairman of Canadians for Safe Technology. He also co-chairs the Business Advisory Group for the Environmental Health Trust. And today he's joining us to share with us the inroads that he and his colleagues are making up in Canada. So Frank, thank you so much for joining us and we'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Cece. And I would like to thank the organizers of the um, uh, electromagnetic protect protection meeting. Can you, can everyone see my slides? Yes. Great, terrific. So um, um, Cece commented, I have uh, spent my uh, entire career in the technology sector. The most recent position I held was as president of Microsoft Canada when I retired. Um, and as you can imagine, I've seen the tremendous benefits that technology can provide, but I've also seen the potential harm if technology is not implemented in a, in a correct manner. And as I said in my introductory and the keynote address that I, I had the opportunity and the pleasure to meet with experts from around the world. Some of them are speakers on the panel today. Some of them are speakers in the, in the, in the general uh, electromagnetic protection conference. And so I don't make the statement lightly and I am very concerned. I'll talk about uh, my industry's behavior, but what, what um, my conclusion back in 2012 actually led me to help co-found uh, Canadians for Safe Technology. And our focus is really, uh, it's a nonprofit, completely 100% nonprofit organization, 100% volunteer based, so nobody's paying any salaries or, or, or benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a national coalition of parents, citizens and experts and advisors actually from, from around the world. And our mission is really to educate and inform Canadians about the potential dangers of exposure to radiation from wireless technology, and also to help educate them on how to use uh, the technology safely. And Cece, I thought your, your slides were uh, excellent in terms of how to use the technology. We're not saying don't use the technology, we're saying use it safely. In addition, C4C's mission is to work with all levels of government in Canada to create healthier, communities for children and families from coast to coast to coast. As CC mentioned, I had the, uh, the pleasure to, uh, to work with Theodora and Deborah and the other members of the Environmental Health Trust. And one of the reasons that I, I joined Environmental Health Trust is it, to my knowledge, it's one of the very few, if, if the only organization that does both the advocacy and education work, but also gets involved with uh, carrying on and funding research about the environmental health hazards to, our, to ourselves and our, and our planet. I want to talk a little bit about the industry right now. And I think there's some things that our industry is doing that you have to give them credit for. One of the things that I've, and I've been on a lot of speakers, been invited to a lot of panels, a lot of discussions. And whenever I hear government employees or government representatives, or even people representing um, regular industries, the, my industry has done a very good job of connecting internet solutions and the benefits with wireless devices. And, and I think it's very important right up front, we make that distinction. I know other people on the conference have, have made that distinction that you can have 100% access to the internet and, and do it in a wired safe environment. Um, if asked if the industry is safe, our uh, technology is safe, my industry say we will meet federal guidelines. I thought um, CC in, in terms of uh, pointing out that there are warnings inside either inside the, the manual or the device itself for every device that uses wireless technology there is an associated warning with it there was a study done here in canada where 80 percent of the canadians said they were not aware that that message even existed and about two-thirds of them admitted to either holding the phone to their head or to, against their body which of course breaks the guidelines. So we can have this debate about whether the guidelines are appropriate or strong enough, but to, to, the fact that people aren't even aware that you break these guidelines that are out of date, in my opinion, by just putting the phone to your head or setting the laptop on your lap, uh, people aren't even aware of that. My industry also has this unbelievable advantage and, and benefit that they're, we're able to introduce the new technology at an incredibly fast and increasing uh, pace. And then we monitor for damage and the onus is on others to prove that there is damage. And, you know, unlike the pharmaceutical industry or the chemical industry or the automotive industry, 
who are all held accountable to prove their technology or their device or their new cars or their new um, uh, prescriptions or the new chemicals. They, the onus is on them to prove that they're safe before they're allowed to ship them to the marketplace. So I think we have this backwards where the technology and the communications industry are allowed to bring out 5G, 5G devices uh, and not be accountable to prove they, they are in fact safe. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, and I'll say this again, just to reinforce that a significant amount of the benefits associated with 5G can be gained from wired, uh, from wired solutions. Um, I think it's also important to note that whether it's in the telecommunications sector or the technology sector, there's a huge dependence on increasing profits, which of course the executives who run and the boards who, who, who oversee uh, industry um, uh, organizations are accountable to the shareholders. And what the shareholders expect is increasing growth in profits. And we know that in the telecommunications sector, all the increasing growth in profits comes from wireless uh, packages and, and solutions that they sell. Similarly to the technology industry, all of the future growth in profits comes from us purchasing new devices. And of course the new devices are driving wireless. Um, you've, you, I'm sure you've seen all the projections in terms of increasing uh, uh, revenue from a 5G, increasing employment, the number of jobs, improvements to our health. And, and all of those may be true. They may be exaggerated, but there's no doubt that there are benefits from 5G technology. I'll, I'll reiterate that a lot of majority of those benefits can come from wired. What I find fascinating, I'm not aware of any analysis that weighs the costs of this wireless 5G solution environment to the actual purported benefits. And these are things like increased healthcare costs. We do know that, and we've got proof now, proof positive, and, and renowned scientists writing, publishing peer-reviewed papers, incredible journals that, would, that predict and forecast that if the World Health Organization and its agency were to really truly evaluate the science, they would come out with a designation of category one, which is the same category as cigarette smoke and asbestos. So we do know the healthcare costs are increasing and will continue. The lost productivity, whether you're electrosensitive or just uh, have, a, uh, have a, a reaction to this increasing amount of exposure. Increasing energy costs. We know there's been reports now that show that a wireless solution can use up to 10 times the energy of a wired solution. And a 5G base station environment actually uses up to three times more energy than a 4G base station. So we know now, and, and I'll just give you one, one fun fact, between 2012 and 2015, the wireless industry cloud footprint, the carbon footprint from the wireless industry cloud increased the equivalent of adding 4.9 million cars to the road. Yet we don't hear anybody talking about that. We hear about the trillions of dollars of benefits and the thousands of jobs. We're not really balancing that. We know that wireless technology is significantly uh, more prone to attack, hacking attacks. So there are more prone to security breaches and our, our personal and business privacy is absolutely uh, going to be at greater risk because of this focus on, on, wire, on wireless technology and wireless solutions. Uh, the damage to the environment, 20% uh, of the, only 20% of the e-waste uh, from cell phones is actually recycled. In the US now, the average life of a cell phone is less than three years. But what I found even more staggering is that that energy is actually less than the energy cost to actually, and the, and the damage to the environment is less than the cost to actually produce and mine some of these rare materials and rare minerals that are needed in these wireless devices. So the impact of actually the mining and creation and, and finding and manufacturing of these devices is actually worse and more significant than the actual pollution from throwing these uh, devices in, in garbage. And finally, there's been NASA and other reputable organizations around the world I've started to, to raise the risk and concern that our ability to forecast weather, uh, whether it's tornadoes or and prepare ourselves, could be impl uh, impacted by as much as 30%. I want to just spend a minute about one of the organizations around the world. Uh, we call it ICNRP, the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. 
and it's and it's becoming more and more vocal in its in its use. In fact, most recently in January of this year, Health Canada came out with a pseudo update to the to our Canadian guidelines, and they actually referenced uh, ICNR, which which I found very disturbing. I'm seeing ICNR members. Uh, we saw them in Bermuda in this quote independent panel that was reviewing um, 5G and whether the the um, safety guidelines of Bermuda should have been uh, increased or or maintained. Uh, they had an inroads in Health Canada when they did their update. And I just want to highlight, I won't go through a lot of these details, but there are, there's a, uh, a lot of concerns about ICNR and its inability to act in, a, in what they pretend or purport to be an independent um, uh, organization because they, are, in fact, are not. It's a very private members club where members elect new members and there's no justification. There's major conflicts with many of the members because of their ties to the telecommunications industry and the US military. The core uh, belief scientific foundation of ICNRP and Health Canada and the FCC in the US and many organizations that are supposed to be protecting us goes on this whole premise that you have to heat tissue to, to uh, cause harm, the whole thermal heating. And you know most people aren't aware that, that that theory was first published in the 1920s. So we're now relying on technology and a paper that was published a century ago even though the fact has been proven false in hundreds of peer-reviewed published papers that, in fact, you can damage tissue without heating it up. And finally, the, the ICNRP doesn't have the skills or the expertise to evaluate the science. I also want to talk just a little bit about the insurance industry. Uh, one of the ways to really test on products, so if you think about the role of insurance companies, is to really insure us against harm and to make sure that, that organizations and individuals are protected. Well, um, Swiss Re and Lloyd's are two of the major reinsurance organizations. In other words, sometimes when companies want to take insurance policy, they will actually sell that policy or uh, funnel it through these reinsurers. So really a big cornerstone and a foundation of the insurance industry are these reinsurers. And two of the more most well-known and most successful are Lloyd's and Swiss Re. And so here, I won't read these, but you know, back even in 2010, the emerging risk team uh, of Lloyd's wrote a, a white paper that compared the potential risks from damage claims from electromagnetic radiation to those posed by asbestos. So this ray in 2013 came out with a preliminary uh, concern and then updated that in 2019, saying that, you know, the 2019 Swiss ray report states, current concerns regarding potential negative health effects from electromagnetic fields are likely to increase. Talked about the exposure of hackers and their ability to exploit 5G and the speed and volume to steal more data faster. And major concerns about privacy and security breaches and espionage. So here you have organizations that have, have no other role in life other than to protect themselves and their organizations they insure, raising red flags about industry concerns about radio frequency radiation. I just put this slide up to remind us that our track record, not only in North America, but really around the world is, is awful when it comes to protecting us. Most of these um, items listed, whether it's asbestos, cigarette smoke, BPA, thalidomide, lead, mercury, it, the correct action by government has taken place, some cases decades after the original science showing harm was peer reviewed and published. And that's where we are today. All the work that we're doing, C4ST and other organizations around the world are trying to shrink that so it won't take decades now that we have the peer reviewed published science available to show harm, it won't take decades to actually protect us. I'll just talk for just two minutes very quickly. Um, we were successful in Canada, had some successes. There's a private members bill by a federal member of parliament that require manufacturers to place health warnings labels on their packaging. And this same uh, member of parliament happened to be on the federal health committee uh, that dedicated three meetings, three sessions to bringing in experts from around the world and came back out with 15 specific recommendations to prove Health Canada's guidelines. Unfortunately, in both those cases, they were passed over to the non-elected members of Health Canada who basically just uh, eliminated and ignored all of those reports. So I would encourage you to continue. As CC said that you don't go this road alone. Um, what you want to do is, is to get a group of people. You have to get elected officials on board. They're, they tend to be the most receptive audiences because they are in fact elected and they have to listen to people in their constituents or their ridings or whatever the local environment is referred to. Just recently, we, we worked, the C4ST worked with 23 other organizations 
on an appeal to the government of Canada, partly to uh, stop the rollout of 5G until we have the health effects properly evaluated, until we hold industry more accountable to, to, uh, to make sure their products are safe, and we do a proper analysis of the benefits of the technology against the true cost. So again, I, I thank you um, again for the opportunity and I look forward to uh, any questions that individuals may have on, um, on the topics. Thank wow. you. Thank you so much, Frank. And we will 